make sure everything's muted. Okay, I don't see the go to here on my screen. Uh, don't we have to do that Zoom first yeah. and open the here, let me launch the other meeting? Okay, it is 5 30. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Would the Secretary please call the roll? President Hill. Here. Vice President Ackman. Here. Director Fulce. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. Director Smalley. Here. Okay. Um, we will be going into closed session tonight. Are there any changes to the closed session agenda? Okay. okay thank you. Are there any oral communications from the public regarding items in the closed session? This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public for items which are on the closed session portion of the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time on closed session items. Normally presentations must not exceed three minutes in length. Individuals may speak only once during the oral communications. No actions may be taken by the board of directors on any oral communications presented. However, the board of directors may request that the matter be placed on a future agenda. Please state your name and town. I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to address the uh, general manager's, manager's performance evaluation. Um, the last financial report that I remember seeing in a board packet was, was as of October 31st. So when I looked at the packet for, for this meeting, I was wondering whether there would be a report for November or maybe a report for November and December. Uh, so at this point, there have been four full months since the last financial information, as far as I can recall. And uh, there is no financial report of any kind on this agenda. So um, I don't think that's adequate. I don't think that's acceptable. Um, when I started following this board in 2011, the finance manager was Karen Alvarez, and there was a steady drumbeat at every meeting. So when it was the first meeting in the month, there would be a financial report, not for the previous month, but for the month before that. So in March, the board would be looking at January financial figures. Um, that would be at the first meeting. Then at the second meeting, there would be all of the investments. So brokerage statements, bank statements, county investment pool, LAFE, all of those things report at the end of the month. And so they may come in mail, might take a week or so, but those could all be assembled for the second board meeting of the month. And there was a regular journey, as I said. Um, so you're pretty far away from that at this point. And also I remember in 2013, there was a period of time when three of the top positions at the district were vacant. Uh, those, those three people retired. That was the, uh, the environmental analyst, the district secretary, and the uh, finance manager. And for most of 2013, at least two of those three uh, positions were vacant. The uh, district manager was performing the district secretary function and so on. Um, and then eventually uh, new people were hired and, and things got better. Also at the end of 2014, the district manager uh, retired. Uh, so that was an additional 
you know, that's similar to the situation that you're in now. Uh, so I understand that there are challenges, but I think it's uh, it's just inadequate and unacceptable. I think you really ought to tell the general manager not to come to a board meeting without some kind of financial information. Just those assets, those, those liquid assets, all that is is scanning some documents. Uh, I think that should be a minimum requirement. And I have other things to say. Thank you. I'm out of time. Um, hello, I'm Nicole um, Wander Barrage. I'm with Brackenbrae um, Country Club, and we are supposedly working on a consolidation project. And um, I'm not exactly sure what's going to be discussed in this closed session. I'm one one to find out whether any stakeholders have been asked to provide feedback on our experiences with the interim leadership. Um, there has not been a consolidation meeting since the district manager retired. Um, we, Brack and Gray, initiated a meeting after Cal OES expressed um, concerns about there has been no progress in um, utilizing our FEMA dollars. In that meeting, we um, were met with a very uncomfortable interaction and basically given an ultimatum that we needed to accept. Um, we have a process in Brack and Gray. It's a governing process. I am definitely the person in charge of this project, but I have to report to my board and to the membership to vote on things. Um, just recently we received a pre-consolidation agreement draft. Um, we have concerns because we don't know the context in which this is being brought to the table when we have the letter of intent. Um, that went through many rounds of um, drafting and discussion with this board and then signed off by this board by the district manager, by our president, by myself. And um, I kind of anticipated this pre-consolidation agreement because I um, was told at the meeting that we had um, that the scope was gonna be scaled down to basically one sixth of the project that we've been working on for the last um, two and a half years. Um, I asked for an engineering report that was prepared by Sandus in August of 2022, and what was met by that was um, an email telling me how I needed to communicate protocol-wise. I did not ask staff to do any calculations. I didn't ask them to draft anything. I didn't ask them to do anything. I just needed information in order for me to communicate with FEMA about why the diameter of the pipes were scaled the way that they were. Um, I feel like I'm in a position now that I'm trying to seek other options for our money. And we're basically into two extensions on the FEMA dollars. And we're really concerned about what's happening. Um, also on a side note, um, a part of the letter of the intent was that if we needed emergency water, um, SLB would meet us and help us through that process. And I realize I'm running out of time, but um, the receiver basically put us on notice right before Thanksgiving that they were gonna cut us off if we didn't accept $26 a unit. I reached out um, to Rick before he left, before that actually happened. He recommended that we stay with our current situation because we weren't sure about the water pressure. Um, as soon as he left, um, the receiver gave us this ultimatum. We contacted the acting manager at that time and then the interim. It's been four months and we're paying this extreme cost. And what was told to us originally for cost has sixfold. I'm sorry, we're out of time, but um, it's, it's very disheartening because I feel like we've had a very proactive working relationship, and I'm really not sure how to communicate our concerns because there's no one above the interim general manager to understand what's going on. Thank you for your comments. Um, can you answer the first question whether there was um, any solicitation to any of the stakeholders regarding? The performance? Not off the top of my head, no. We will investigate that, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, at this point, let's adjourn to a closed session. And Scott, you'll have us off the. Yes, there you go.
I do not see a panelist list here, though. Yeah, you're not a panelist. You're you're. Okay, so I don't appear to be on listed as a panelist yet. Do you go through the meeting link? Did you get in the email? Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, maybe let Mark help you if he can see the people that are online. Yeah. He can tell you if somebody's got their yeah. hand raised. Yeah, can I'll you do you. that, Mark? Yes, please. I can monitor that. Thank you. Want to monitor? <laughs> okay. We are back to the open session. Reconvening the meeting. Holly, will you call the roll again? President Hill. Present. Vice President Ackman. Here. Director Fulz. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. Director Smalley. Here. Okay, uh, report of actions taken in closed session. There were no actions taken. Uh, we pause the closed session and we'll resume closed session after we finish the open session. So um, that's where we are with regards to the closed session. Changes to the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? Um, Mr. President. Okay. Oral communications. Personal portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public. Any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time. Normally, presentations must not exceed, exceed three minutes in length, and individuals may only speak once. Please understand that the Brown Act limits what the board can do regarding issues not on the agenda. No action or discussion may occur on issues outside of those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during oral communications be placed on a future agenda. Mr. Holloway. I'm Bruce Holloway from Boulder Creek. Um, I wanna say that I think the committee structure is broken. It's dysfunctional. It's non-operational. Um, pretty much every item on this agenda could have been addressed by a committee. Uh, I, I was looking at the first three. Change to the board policy manual. That sounds like administration. Uh, RGS contract amendment. That sounds like finance. Peabine pipeline replacement sounds like engineering to me. Um, and none of the committees met last month. So there were meetings in January, which were pretty much content free, except uh, the, the citizen committee members introduced themselves and then the committees came up with a schedule of when they were going to meet. And I think I only went to the finance committee meeting, but I did. I, I remember discussing the February 14th meeting in particular uh, because it was one day before the board meeting and I thought it was kind of useless to have a, an advisory committee meeting one day before a board meeting when you can't even, you can't even get anything in the packet at that point to say what the committee concluded. Um, I wasn't really thinking about Valentine's Day, but I guess the way things work around here is that staff runs the committees. Two board members cannot compel staff to do anything. Three board members can get anything to happen. You can hire and fire and change policy and do anything with three. But with two, you can't even get staff to show up. Uh, they might just decide to take a holiday on a day when there's a committee meeting scheduled. And so the staff runs the committees. They, committees can only meet if it's okay with staff. And I think that's pretty useless. I think the uh, staff needs to be responsible to the board, the board as a whole. And the committees don't really seem to do much. It's hit and miss. Sometimes uh, issues just completely bypass the committees. Don't ask me why. Or who, I mean, I guess it's the general manager makes those decisions. Um, other times, discussions get holed up in the committee for months, and the other three board members don't get any input into whatever that policy is. 
I don't think that's the way county water districts were intended to be organized. I think when county water districts were created, the idea was to have five board members and have everybody contribute. Have everybody is a deliberative body. There should be a deliberative process where everyone gets to contribute to every decision. So I think the uh, the committees have uh, outlived their usefulness. They were conceived in STEM, by the way, because when they were first established, there were three board members on each committee, which violated the state law. And that went on for years. Uh, but at this point, I think it's time to retire all the committees. I think it'd be better to have board meetings and have all board members uh, participate. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that wish to speak? <coughs> yes. My name is Karen Brown, north of Boulder Creek. And I made a wonderful chart to show all of you, since we know how you love these charts, to show just how much water I have used on a yearly basis, how much you're charging me. So it all corresponds with each year and how much the charges are. And as you can see, my water use is pretty much across the board the same. Yet my increase of the rate, which is in red, and as you can see in 2019, I had a leak and I dearly paid for that. The rate keeps increasing, increasing, increasing. This is only a nine year rate bar. But these bars are real actual numbers, not assumed as you pay $114,000 for for the exact same presentation that they gave Soquel Creek. And to be disrespectful on top of it, shameful. And you made a wonderful point about how we weren't using enough water, so you had to raise the rate so that we could cover all that. Well, that was done to us in 2017. Our rates were raised because we weren't using enough water. And the rates just keep going up and up and up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public that wish to speak? Do we have I, see, I see nobody online. Okay, we see no one online. Okay, moving on. Unfinished business. Change to monthly board of directors meetings. Brian, this is your proposal. Would you like to? Sure. Thank you, President. Um, so, pretty simple ask, I guess, is the staff is recommending that we move to monthly rather than bi-monthly meetings. And to paint a little bit of a picture here, if you can imagine, for instance, now, tomorrow, our agenda items are due for the March 21st meeting. It means they're due to me to review because I moved up our due date by a whole week for when we review. It used to be the Friday before the Thursday, so a little less than a week ahead of time. And Holly would have everything ready by Monday, I guess, and then they would it would be published. But now we push that back. And so you can imagine the cycle gets, sometimes it's a little daunting, is that we're finishing up reports this week as we're ready for a, a board meeting writing for the board meeting as well. So I think for staff to be able to have more time to be working on the actual work that needs to get done and maybe reducing the reporting cycle is certainly, I know that it's unanimous among staff to have that. Um, I also, I guess I could point out that I know if, as each of you retire and so forth from the board is making it an attractive option for other board members that may want to come along and see that it's a monthly cycle rather than bi-monthly. Um, I realize that of course means we're putting, there is pressure on staff and I have advised them already is that puts the pressure on us is we have to be thinking five, six weeks out now for a deadline. If we want something to be on the street such as such a date, we really have to be thinking far in advance. And also, it, 
does put a little bit more pressure on you folks as the board to be efficient about how you're grinding through an agenda. So just saying, because now there's a meeting every month rather than every two weeks, roughly. So I think with that, um, what you are being asked to do is adopt a resolution which allows that change to be made to the board policy manual. Along with one correction is that the address we still have in the board policy manual that we're meeting down the street at the maintenance building when in fact we're meeting here. So that change is also being made. So with that, I will answer any questions. Jeff, do you want to? No, so. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I, uh, first of all, I, I appreciate the proposal and I guess um, the, you know, one thing I want to say is um, I, I think it's entirely possible to move to a monthly cadence, um, but I do think that it's challenging when things come up urgently. And there have been a couple of times where we've been in situations where whether it was a financial, we had to get a contract through. And so we absolutely had to have the meeting in order to do that. Um, or there was other business that had to happen. Um, I think there's opportunity to set special meetings when those things come up. Um, but I also am aware that there are, you know, limitations to certain items. Some things have to be done in a regular general session meeting as opposed to a special meeting. And so I don't know if that'll create any challenges. But um, I have served as staff to six different public agency boards. And we've never met more than, and not one board that I have ever been on has met more than once a month. So I, I know it's possible um, to, to move to the schedule. And I would think that the one thing that we might do to accommodate taking on more content in our one monthly meeting if we were to make this move is um, to maybe change the meeting times a little bit so that instead of meeting at 5 30 for the closed session maybe we start at five you know do that five to six start the general session meeting a little earlier that way if we have to go later we've got a little bit more runway to do that without you know Mark? Um, I've never been a fan, uh, when I was in the work environment of having a meeting just because it was on the calendar and just because it was regularly scheduled. Um, however, um, we have an interim general manager right now who's been with us for, uh, three months. Um, we have an interim finance manager right now. Um, the lack or the more limited communication that we get as a board then um, with meeting uh, monthly instead of twice a month uh, has me you know, concerned or conflicted between those two uh, viewpoints. So um, can the can the can the staff get the necessary? Can we, put, can we put somebody on mute, please? CTV, can you please mute? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, can the staff get the necessary input? in the timely manner. But then I asked the, myself the converse, can the board get the necessary information that we need um, as the uh, overseers of the district um, in the role if we're meeting less, less frequently during the time period when we have interim general manager, interim finance manager, you know, given the uh, staffing transitions that we've had as of late. So it's not a question that I'm asking. It's just a 
general feel that I have at this point that I'm weighing between those two. So, okay. So I'm kind of going back and forth. Gail? Yeah, I guess like Mark, I'm a little bit ambivalent about this. Um, I, I think that in, in theory, Jamie is absolutely right that you should be able to get by by a single board meeting a month. But we have a disaster prone valley <laughs> that, that tends to make us have to uh, meet to, you know, approve contracts and things like this. I mean, I remember after the fire, uh, Lois was living with me and because she was out of her home and, and uh, we were in Menlo Park and, you know, you were having meetings every few days. So um, this I think that that's a reason why we have them more often than, say, Scotts Valley or so so Cal. Um, I, I think that uh, Mark is right that uh, it is incumbent on the staff if we go to one meeting a month that there's uh, better communication and more communication sometimes by just kind of emails letting us know that this is what's up, right? Not that we would respond or do anything to violate the Brown Act, but we would know what, what is uh, going on. Um, I think the other thing that has to happen is it means that, um, well, let me put it, put it the other way. I think sometimes in the past, there's been a tendency to depend on the fact that we were going to meet every couple of weeks to not always uh, create the best crafted memos or the best crafted work that was likely to get through on the first pass. And so I think what that also would require um, is that, that the staff, it, there may be fewer meetings, but it means that the quality of the material that comes to the board is gonna be pretty high so that we don't end up bouncing it back. And then, cause you can't afford to bounce it back and wait another, and wait another month. So I think in terms of the time saved to the staff, I, I don't think you wanna think that it's gonna cut your load in half. I think that it, it requires uh, something else, but I, um, and, and I do tend to, uh, I guess I tend to defer to the, the wishes of, of the staff um, on this, but given that some of our senior staff are interim, um, it, it's not quite as compelling as it might have been, <laughs> um, you know, and especially since uh, uh, Heather is not full time uh, mm -hmm. to see how things operate around here. but. So I guess all you're hearing from me is deep ambivalence about this both both ways. Okay. Bob? I have a question and then um, uh, a number of comments. Mm -hmm. So in the last agenda, uh, the reason for doing this had to do with a potential board resignation, I believe. Is that no longer the case? Because I didn't see it in here. Um, no, it would be the case if if we made my issue is that I can't continue to serve as a board member if I have to miss every other meeting um, because I have a professional obligation. So I'm willing to resign my seat in order to let somebody who can be present for every meeting um, fill that spot. If we were to go to one meeting a month, I would no longer have a conflict and therefore would not have the same issue. Um, so I'm sort of in this, like, we'll see what happens with this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the last agenda, that seemed to be the driving force for it. Um, this agenda, that seems to be not a consideration. Well, I, I would... So I, I, I just wanted to get that clear because the discussion around policy of doing something for a particular board member, right. as it was implied in the last agenda, is different than this discussion. Could I respond to that, Jeff? Just, I mean, I, I appreciate what you're saying, and I agree with it. And and I, I want to be clear for you and the public, <laughs> I didn't ask the staff to make this consideration. I made my concerns about my ability to serve effectively known to staff and let them know that my solution to that was that I felt that I needed to resign staff and you know having thought through whether or not this made sense for them for this reason and obviously a series of other reasons which frankly i 
as a staff to public agencies, I do agree with the logic. I mean, having a meeting every two weeks and having to meet the Brown Act conditions of noticing that meeting at least 72 hours in advance, so you can't get that information into a meeting that happens the day before. Um, you know, it, it's really challenging because it's a big cycle to be managing on a, on a basically weekly basis. They get a week off and then they start again. They get a week off and they start again. Um, and that that takes up a huge amount of staff time that could be used to do other things, you know. So so we have to ask ourselves as a board: Is it more important that staff be spending their time preparing stuff for us every two weeks, or would we, as a district, gain more efficiencies if staff didn't have to serve us every two weeks, could do their job for at least three weeks a month, and only have to do board preparation and work with us one week a month? That's the question that I think really should be asked, less about whether or not a board member can serve um, every meeting. And that's what I think is, have you know, in this memo being asked here. Yeah, that, that, that's fair, because I don't know that that same accommodation would be applied to every board member um, that, that might have similar issues because, you know, a couple of us are still working. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm expecting new board members will also probably be working right. as well. Um, yeah, I, I have a I have a number of thoughts and, and comments around this. I, I don't look at this necessarily as a zero sum game. There are tools available to simplify and accelerate board preparation. We choose not to use any of those, and and those tools are tools that they, that other um, organizations use that can I think simplify the job that the staff has to go through in order to do this. Um, we're, we're not taking advantage of that technology. And that has been a decision that prior staff um, didn't, you know, didn't want to do that. Um, I, I would strongly recommend um, looking into that. Can you but, elaborate, Bob? I don't know what you're, it's kind oh, of cryptic. What are you Yeah, doing it's, uh, I mean, there's, there's tons of, there's at least a half a dozen different uh, SaaS uh, companies providing board preparation software, including Civic Plus, who provides our um, uh, website. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it, and in addition to simplifying the process of doing that, this also allows for a more collaborative process on the part of staff and allows you even to share that agenda more quickly with uh, the public once it's ready to go. Um, this was suggested to, to um, the prior uh, district manager years ago, and and was you know at that point in time we were, we weren't going to do it. Uh, echoing your comment about staff um, uh, reports and that sort of thing, I think there is dramatic improvements that could be made in how information is communicated to the board and to the public um, through the use of what is commonly um, used for project management and program management techniques in terms of single slide, uh, graph, heavy on graphics, um, heavy on bullet points, and some supporting material as necessary. Um, we do not do a great job, in my opinion, of providing a lot of the quantitative justification uh, for items that are frequently, I, I have to ask, what are the other bids that were, were provided so we can take a look at, at the numbers? Um, we used to do one meeting a month. I don't, I mean, there, you know, I've been involved in this long enough now, I have enough history to know what happened when that um, was going on. It was a complete and utter disaster. Um, the board became uh, what I would call disconnected from its oversight responsibilities. Um, and I am already concerned about the fact that we are withdrawing information from uh, the board relative to cadence and quantity and even the in the committees. Um, it, it's still early days, but it's enough to raise some concerns for me. And moving to one board uh, meeting a month, and there was even the notion of, well, you know, there another organization does once a quarter. Uh, we can't do an effective job of or oversight um, without a more serious discussion about what's the implication of moving to one board meeting a month relative to the information that's not only made available to us, but to the public. Because to me, it's all about transparency and what we're doing as an organization. Look, this is a very small 
community focused agency. We're not a huge city, we're not a huge county. We are very close to our, our community, or at least we should be, because those are the people that we serve. And when people come to the meeting frequently, we know who those people are because we see them every day or we've worked with them over the years. Um, I, I, I am concerned about where we seem to be wanting to take this agency. And it's even indicated in today's agenda, which is all about um, consent items. And so there's not really, if you if you follow the consent, there's not really an opportunity to discuss that or to ask questions in public so that the community can hear what we're talking about. Um, I, we seem to be moving more and more to doing that kind of thing. My concern is these monthly meetings might ultimately wind up just being a collection of, of consent items. Uh, so this, I don't think is particularly well thought out. I don't think it is, um, doesn't come with any assurances about what information the board and community is going to get outside of, I guess now quarterly staff reports and monthly meetings. I, the meetings are certainly gonna be longer. That was one of the other complaints is that when it was monthly meetings, they would go on for hours. I mean, it'd be you know four hour meetings. Now you can get around that by doing consent, but then you're not doing transparency. So, um, I think this is just, I think this needs a lot of work if we wanted to move to something like this. That kind of work could be something that we could discuss in committee um, if we wanted to do that. Um, but at this point in time, I, I'm, a, I'm a hard pass on this right now, given where this proposal is, given where we've already made other decisions. Uh, I am feeling like I am no longer really confident in my ability to do oversight at this point if we move to this once a month meeting. Okay, so I think I'm the only one that hasn't spoken yet. Yeah. Yes. And um, I'm not hearing a lot of support for this among well, I, I, I think we're discussing. Let's yes. not presuppose the, <laughs> yes. uh, but the conclusion here. I, I think that I, we've had, you know, let, let's, so let's the, continue to discuss. The one thing I would like to see if we do do this as a earlier comment mentioned, our committees seem to be really not very functional at this point. And I think if we did move forward with this, we would need to actually uh, juice up the committees with more activities, uh, more meetings, and get more input from the committees, put more of the work on the committees to help the staff with uh, making sure that we get the information that we need. Well, you have a question. Yeah. Good idea, but you don't do this without, and then say, uh, so this is like, okay, we'll give you this, but bet on the company, the rest. Uh, the, 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 no, no, they can't be separate. They would have to be done well, in conjunction. Yes. And that's not what's in front of us right now. I understand that. But then we don't have a motion yet, so. Right. We don't have so, to approve can, exactly what is being uh, proposed here. We can uh, amend it, yeah, um, so. But I don't know if Jeff has concluded yet with what he was thinking. I wanna hear the rest of of your thoughts, if there are any on this at this point, so. So I don't think I have anything to add beyond what's okay. been said so far. Um, there's points on both sides and I, I don't have anything else to add. Okay. Um, I do wanna uh, comment further. I wanna disagree on one point that Bob is making on the consent aspects. Um, uh, yes, I'm, uh, there are several items that are on the consent agenda that I want to talk about. I have the opportunity to do that. Um, and normally those items I think would have been part of the uh, new business aspects. They're there. We can talk about it. Um, I think um, given time, uh, Brian would see what is not gonna get through on the consent agenda uh, given our questions on things like that. 
So I, I understand your point, but it's a philosophy. The philosophy is we're coming in with all sorts of consent items rather than working with the board mm -hmm. a priori to determine yeah. what should be on the consent. Yeah. And that to me is a issue. Uh, may I? Jeff? Yes, please. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm confused by the, the question that Bob is setting up here because First of all, um, again, as I've said, I, I have extensive experience with public agency boards. It is very common for contracts and other pro forma business to be handled on consent. And it is very fair what Mark is saying that over time, new general managers and new staff sort of learn like, oh, that's going to be a hot button issue. Let's make sure that we move that into the general. But I don't know how he would work with individual board members to prioritize each and every item on the agenda yeah. in advance of the agenda, right? So this is a bit of an iterative process, but it's still a public process. Items that are on consent are only there for the efficiency of the meeting, meaning that if the board says, yeah, those contracts all look fine, great, go forward, we're not gonna sit here and go through each individual one, we can as a board make the choice to pass those items that way. Conversely, as the board members, if any individual board member has a question about an item on consent, or if any individual member of the public comes into a meeting with a question about an item on consent, they pull that item and we have to discuss it. So I don't understand why there's an issue with items on consent because they're still fully public and they're still available for any board member or member of the public mm -hmm. to choose to discuss should they want to. And if we, on the rare occasion say, we don't want to discuss any of those contracts, great on us, we get to pass them all without wasting everybody's time and have a more efficient meeting. So I don't take issue with things on consent and I okay. appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess I would just echo what, what Jamie said and, and is I think that using greater use of the consent agenda is totally appropriate because we can all put it on. And we actually allow something that's unusual, that we allow members of the public to pull things off the consent agenda that's not required. Um, so there's really, uh, there's, you know, the, the, the idea that somehow yes, that this do. is reducing transparency, I think is is just wrong. Mm -hmm. It's still there, it's still on the agenda, people can still pull them off, but it can lead to much greater uh, efficiency of of the meetings, and one thing that could also happen um, is that it can put more emphasis on taking things to committees and getting them sort of vetted. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jeff was yes. kind of alluding to this: is that That's it, exactly know, if we, what I if we time the meeting, uh, the committee meeting, so they're like two weeks ahead of whatever the board is, then the staff gets a chance to run it by the relevant mm -hmm. committee and then it comes hopefully to the board in a way that it's it's ready to go. I mean, in an ideal world, you would not need to pull anything off the consent agenda, right? It would everything would be pretty clear. And and I think partly what I'm Bob and your your face is all screwed up and that I and I know why is <laughs> because you and I have a fundamental disagreement about the nature of board meetings. Um, you see them as, as a, I, well, let me say how I see them. I see them as a way to do the district's business. And we allow the public to watch us do the district business. But it is not the goal of board meetings to educate the public, right? I mean, that that's a, a huge task, and that is not the goal of a board meeting. A board meeting is for oversight and doing the district's business and for allowing whoever wants to watch it. They are our guest to do that. And so that's why you and I have a fundamental, you know, you're, you're always appealing to transparency and we have to discuss every item. As far as I'm concerned, if an item is well prepared, the staff has done their job and they've convinced us um, it is our job as oversight is not to, you know, talk about everything just for the sake of talking about it. It's our job to just say, okay, you've done your job. Great. Onward. Uh, past boards have gotten into serious trouble by um, doing what is being advocated here. Um, and, and by the way, if the public can in fact pull something off the consent agenda, I would suggest that we modify the uh, 
language around uh, that. And letting people do it. Well, well but, but right now it's it's just it direct. It doesn't say that. Yes, I, I agree. So by, it's it, it, just it, direct. I know right it now. doesn't. It doesn't say it, but that our practice has been we've allowed yeah. it. And you guys, it's not a practice. Yeah. It's the law, and we can ask right. Barbara to weigh in on this. Right. The public must have the right to comment on any item on the agenda according to the provisions of the Brown Act, mm -hmm. and therefore it does not matter that we state on our agenda that directors because that's that's stage direction to the directors to say if you want to comment on an item on agenda you can pull it and, and i agree to, with you we can add the language that says i'm speaking thank you um I, that we can add the language that says that the public should um have the opportunity to do so as well to make it more clear to the public but the fact of the matter is legally the public has the right to comment on anything on the agenda including consent if i may go back to being able to speak before i was interrupted um Board meetings are not something that most people in the community are very familiar with. The arcane ins and outs of what happens in board meetings is something that most people will never become very familiar with. And so, yes, because of the fact that this is a local community-based or organization, um, yeah, I do have, do have a very different philosophy. I believe that it is absolutely incumbent upon us as part of our oversight to make sure that our community understands the business of the district and the elements of what we're trying to accomplish. Otherwise, you're, you get into the kinds of situations that the board got into in the past in 2013 and 2014, particularly around the Taj Mahal project, where the board got completely disconnected from the community, thought that that was, hey, perfectly what the community wanted and turn out to not be that way at all because of the fact that a lot of stuff was just going through without a lot of transparency and a lot of disclosure. Some of you weren't around for that. I understand that, but I can tell you from my experience, it was a very ugly time and it was not fun for the board members either. So yes, I do have a different philosophy in that because of my experience working within this community, being here for as long as I have and understanding that the community wants us to do their business, but if we don't stay close to them and we get sideways from them, that's when bad things happen. Okay, let me bring this back center to where we are. Uh, we are still on the issue of changing to monthly meetings. And we, I won't say we sidetracked, but we took a, a, a detour here for a while on how the consent agenda is, is put together. Um, I believe we've discussed the proposed change to monthly board of directors uh, in some depth. Is there a motion from a board member regarding that? I, I, I will move the uh, recommendation that the board adopt the attached resolution, modifying the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board of Directors policy manual to allow changing the board meeting schedule from bi-monthly to once per month. The, the recommended motion is that the board adopt the attached resolution. Well, you can read it yep. here. A second. Okay. Holly, will you uh, uh, oh, order. comments from the public? I thought these meetings were an opportunity for us to introduce you. <laughs> In common parlance, bi-monthly meetings every two months. No, semi-monthly meetings. Semi-monthly means every two months. Bi-monthly means bi-weekly, every two weeks. Are you correcting me? Yeah, grammatically. I, um, I object to being interrupted the clock is running. I think every time a board member interrupts a member of the public, the clock should be reset and the board chair should admonish the board member. That's unacceptable. Fine. Please reset Mr. Holloway's clock to three minutes. CTV. Thank you. Hey. Um, so I don't agree. I think bi-monthly means every two months. Semi means a half a month. Um, Director Mayhood, I think, used the term bounce back. Bounce back. 
there might be an item on the agenda and then the board would discuss it and it would bounce back. Now, I, I don't, I can't really think of many times that I've seen that happen, but in a way that's what should happen. You're supposed to have a discussion and if it turns out that the staff recommendation is not really what you think should happen, then it does need to bounce back. Now, if it's a trivial change, maybe it can be incorporated in your motion. But sometimes it takes revisiting the whole thing and redrafting the whole proposal so that everybody can understand. So I think you have to be open to bouncing back. Otherwise, you're, you're just a rubber stamp board that's not doing any oversight. You're just going to say whatever staff says is fine to you. Um, I do think the committees are, are dysfunctional, non-functional. So I think you'd be way better off getting rid of all the committees and having sticking to two board meetings a month. Thank that you. That way you're all going to be. You've given us that already tonight. So. Well, I'm going further and saying, along with maintaining semi-monthly board meetings, uh, then all of you will be interacting together and we will be getting the best of this board rather than having issues go off to some committee where only a minority is discussing it and then the others never hear the discussion um, and can't contribute to it either. Um, and I'm sure I've got another thought, but I'm not going to be remembered. So thank you thank for you. your input. Does anyone else from the public have a comment? Uh, we, uh, we, we, we do have uh, we do have two online. Two online. Thank you. Who want to speak? Um, Cynthia. Cynthia Denzel. This is Cynthia uh, from Felton. Uh, I would like to say that I think going to the monthly meetings would be fine if the the committees are actually functioning as they should, but I've heard comments from committee members that with no meetings, so many meetings canceled, they were not able to do the work they expected to have done. And they've gotten discouraged about serving on the committees if they're not going to be functional. So I urge you to rethink what's happening with the committees I think they give members of the public, a few members, much more access to the information and those members of the public can then spread that understanding to other people in the public without all of that time being taken during regular board meetings. Uh, they will still be reporting to the board meetings. So I think the information will get there, but much of the, the work uh, of the nitty gritty details of <laughs> could be taken care of in the committees. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you for your input. Who else do we have here? Alina Lang. Alina, please. Hi, Alina Lang, Boulder Creek. And when I saw this on the agenda, it really made me tune in because I, I was super excited uh, to go to once a month because I thought the staff really just needs to be able to do the work that they need to be able to do um, and not, you know, spending so much time prepping for these board meetings. But hearing that, like, this is going to be kicked back to the committees, um, you know, I think it sounds really great on paper, but having that actually be implemented, uh, I agree with some of the comments that Cynthia was talking about is maybe that these committees aren't functioning as properly as they could, and they are canceled a lot. I mean, I served for three years, they're canceled and rescheduled, and a lot of people can't make it, and it kind of hurts the flow of the conversation. Um, so I am worried about that. And then I give a lot of pause the fact that I just heard that this is mainly being considered to accommodate another board member's schedule, especially when other people were, you know, willing and ready to be able to do these twice a month uh, meetings and take that oath. So that's also giving me some pause. But I guess like I, I would go with what what staff wants, but it's, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of back and forth on this is all that's all I had to say. Thank you. 
Thank you, Alina. Jeff, could I could I ask if, if Brian would respond to some of the comments that he's heard before I cast my vote? I, you know, in particular, the the role of the committees, since you've heard some input both from people on the board and from the public. Um, the role of the committees. Um, sure. I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, in think... other words, how do you do you see anything changing or if we go to one uh, board meeting a month, what what do you what do you think that would do with regard to how you want to deal with committees? I, you know, it would make committees in some way, in some cases, more important that we're utilizing them. But to be honest, for three committee meetings and a board meeting a month, that's still four meetings a month. It is, it is a lot. And there are times when if we don't absolutely need the committee, it's like I'm the first to say I don't need the meeting. But if we can utilize that to leverage these meetings, in other words, if, if things go through the committee of business and finance, et cetera, et cetera, that um, we can use that as a base. And that, again, you know, I know that you were talking in parallel about consent agendas, and I'll tell you the world I came from, almost everything on this agenda tonight would be on consent. And also, that this, is a, this was a city that, Chewed through a lot of agenda items. There might have been 25 items on a consent, but in contracts up to a million dollars. But the whole idea is when I say efficiency, it's like, yes, you can't afford to debate every single item, but if something does need to get, is going to require more debate, and you know it's a hot button issue, it's, yes, bring it to committee. And we have actually, we, all committees are go for this upcoming month. We just went through the rate study. So focus is back now on getting other business taken care of. But if it's a routine item, I don't even see the re reason to bring it to a committee. If it's a contract change order, it's not really worth the airtime. It's more things that have to do with, anyway, bigger issues that re do require some discussion and input. So yes, I mean, I think all, all of these, all meetings, you know that there is the value. There's the value in being able to to take care of the business at hand, and and but also make sure that you are stopping along the way to get the input you need. I mean, I know that some places actually combine their committees. They have one oversight committee, and it's like there's so there's one committee. So that's that's nice. There's two meetings a month, but maybe longer meetings. But again. That's that's kind of where I'm at with it. It's like I think that we could process more information here at the same time, but do it in a way that I don't think you're skipping out on any transparency or anything. You you know it gives you more time to talk about the issues that are important, and that some items are routine, and it's just usually what I my instructions have have been. It's like if your item is going on the consent, make sure it it's all sewn up and tight because you're expecting it just to stand on the paper alone. Thank you. Bob? As the small community that we are, committees have historically been used as ways to help people become interested in the district with the possibility of serving on the board. I know that there is at least all of this all of us have served on committees. I've served on committees before we were on the board. Uh, to me, they're an invaluable, and that combined it with the fact that in 2018, we expanded the committees from just one public person to um, more, up to three, allows for more public participation and hopefully more people that might be interested in that. Um, yeah, I, that to me is why the committees are invaluable. Um, and because we don't have uh, a ton of people, we're not a densely populated area with a ton of people that might be interested in public service um, and get their training and how to do that elsewhere. So I'm, I'm hopefully the committees will be uh, re-energized on, on this. Can I say something? So, oh, go ahead. Were you gonna? Do we have any further comments before we take a vote? 
I have a further comment. You have a comment. Thank yeah, you. actually, and and if I can take it just a point of personal privilege, I want to apologize to Mr. Holloway. I shouldn't have interrupted you, and I thought I was correcting a simple misunderstanding, and I was revealing my own simple misunderstanding. So I'm sorry for that. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Can we reread the motion so that we're all clear on it, and then uh, have a vote? Sorry, I don't have that in front of me. Uh, um, the board adopts the attached resolution to modify the district's policy manual to allow changing the frequency of regularly scheduled board of directors meetings from bi-monthly to once per month. President Hill. Yes. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Falls? No. Yes. Uh, no. Director Mayhood? Yes. Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, moving on to new business. Would staff like to present the Ref Tellus contract amendment? Yes, thank you, President. Um, as you know, we have Heather, who's our interim finance um, director of finance. Um, and so RGS, Regional Government Services, is how we contract for her services. That's the agency that provides the ser her services. Um, when I came on board, Heather told me that she was basically the understanding is she would do eight hours a week because she had other clients. I doubled that to 16 hours a week, meaning basically I needed all of her, as much of her time as she would give us. Um, if we were to hire even a board, a new director of finance today, I would still expect two to three months of overlap. Uh, with Heather sort of helping to fill in the gaps and educate and also just making sure that we've sewn up the whole finance gap that we have. Um, the likelihood is that maybe we may not have a director of finance maybe for another month or two. Hopefully we have somebody on board that we're looking at, but the idea was we looked at their contract and decided to project the burn rate that we have right now out to the end of September um, and consider that as the number of hours we think we need to keep her on board. The other thing we did is we're asking to just extend the term, which would now expire in June and take it out to September. So there's budget. Um, for right now, I just basically checking that box that with that contract is available that we can use those services and keep moving along. So obviously if we don't need their services, we don't need to keep, keep using them. Um, in the meantime, we're doing our best to find a new director of finance. So one quick clarification point. This money only gets spent if she does puts in the hours. Correct. So we're authorizing a, an extension of the hours over time. But if in two or three months, we've got a new finance director and there's been some overlap, all that, then this gets cut off. Exactly. Or, you know, we could propose maybe that, you know, RGS provides a lot of different people with different expertise. So maybe we say, hey, we still want to use for something else, but of course then it would come back to you know, the board. Yeah, but so this is this is an upper limit here based on how much we use her rather than rather than a, a firm expenditure. Yes, correct. Okay. Well, well let me let me uh, let me clarify that for me anyway. Um, we can terminate at any time for convenience, could terminate the contract. That is, there's no requirement that we um, keep it through September, end of September, and there's no requirement that we spend um, uh, any amount of money. Correct. Okay. What is the hourly rate? Um, I don't, their contract, it's in the... 
I, I didn't see the original contract attached, so I, I, I didn't take the time to go find it. Um, the contract, um, they, they gave us a varying billing rates. What, what is the billing rate for? I mean, we're using for Heather RGS for Heather, correct? Yes, and nothing else at this point. What would her rate be? I believe it's 150 an hour, but I can't without actually looking at the contract. I wouldn't want to say for sure. Right. So these are the kinds of questions that do come up as part of at least my review of items like this. Um, you know, I want to make sure that we're not getting locked into, and this is for the future, I'm not getting locked into something, that there is actually an explicit termination for convenience. And just a refresh on what the contract was so that we're not having to go back and um, try to find it, um, right? As a board member, that's not my job. Mm -hmm. Can Okay. So um, I understand why we need to do this. I um, My question is about the recruitment for the permanent role. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, s s sort of one, where is that at? And are we getting candidates that we are even interested in looking at? And then two, if we're not, if that's, if we're not getting any movement on that, have we considered, um, uh, I don't know, doing some really different creative things with this job? And I understand that I don't know what the limitations would be if this is a union role and what conversations we might have to have. But like, if it's possible for Heather to do this job in 16 hours, could we seek a fractional um, uh, finance director at so that, you know, rather than looking for someone on a full-time basis, we're hiring somebody who's, you know, not doing full-time work, but they're making, you know, the higher rate, which might make the job more attractive to potential candidates. I mean, I'm just like, what creative things could we do to fill this role permanently? Right. Well, I, so I could answer your questions uh, sequentially is we did have a candidate and we were actually set to bring her in the office and do a round of um, in-person interviews, but she dropped out for personal reasons. So my first approach is that also looking at um, what other, how we can continue to get the word out even better than we're doing. Mm -hmm. I know feedback is, is that it's hard, financial roles like that are hard to fill since Enron basically, since you had this big financial blow ups is that they are hard to come by. Um, but that doesn't mean I'm optimistic about that. The other thing is, is I, if you notice this last agenda, there was, I was going to offer, change the title of the role, but still offer the same amount. And I realized that by talking with HRs, I actually if I just take it and call it director of finance now instead of director of finance and business services, does it need to come back for board approval? So that's the way the direction I'm going because I'm basically just saying we right now that position or formerly that position was also managing the front office mm -hmm. and the meter readers. And I don't see the necessity in that. So I'm already taking that one step of sort of taking away some of the managerial responsibilities and really I'm looking for a finance person. Mm -hmm. I would say that right now, having Heather for 16 hours a week, although she's magnificent those 16 hours a week and gets a lot done, is we need a full-time finance person for now. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure that, that I would go and reduce the hours, but I am willing to look at creative ways, um, first creative ways to recruit that person, but then I am open to some creativity in terms of how that role gets shaped, for sure. So. Um, can I, uh, one, one question or comment, Jeff? Yes, go ahead. Um, can you tell me, uh, or, I, do we have a recruiter that we're working through for this role? Or are we hiring for it directly? We have not yet gone to a recruiter, but I'm I'm ready to. Let's just say. Sure, and and maybe that's something that we need to talk about. But um, just as a like 
this job should be on. Are you familiar with CalOps? Yes. Yeah, we're not advertising this job there that I can see. Um, it should be on the, um, there's a couple of other ones though, like the other government one. CalOps is, CalOps is actually as someone that's used that services, actually it's less used, but I agree it should be there too. But there's the other, there, I forget what the parallel one is now that um, it is on. It should I will be say CalOps Cal for Bay Area public um, agency workers is is used more heavily it, outside of the Bay Area. I agree with you, but it, it it started in the Bay Area and it tends to cater to Bay Area agencies and therefore more local employees might see it if we advertise on CalOps. It's just a suggestion. Uh, NeoGov is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. And actually NeoGov is kind of, even in the area, it's taken over where CalOps used to be mm -hmm. because it's more online friendly to how you can actually fill out your application but anyway i i'm aware of that and it's mm -hmm. um all any positions like that the two open positions now <laughs> definitely got my sights on wanting to fill them okay other comments okay uh, i i would have said more or less what jamie did but yes. with more, less expertise <laughs> which is that i i just hope that we um Think imaginatively about some of these these staffing issues, and I, I don't have any questions of, about extending this uh, contract. I think it's the obvious thing to do, but I guess in my mind, I also, if we can't attract a really good candidate, um, perhaps we would be better off with having somebody that's a fifty percent time finance person um, in this, you know, continuing on, and then hiring somebody or promoting from within for the business uh, services part of the mm -hmm. job, which I, I think you're absolutely right. Those are two totally different skill sets, mentality, everything. And to glom those together into a single job never really made sense. Um, so I, I applaud your efforts in, <laughs> in doing, doing that. That's all. Okay. Do we have any more board comments on this? Any comments from the public on the uh, RGS contract amendment? <clears throat> yes. Uh, Karen Brown, north of Boulder Creek, on page 40 of your little packet here, if you all want to turn to that, it talks about the additional contracted amount of 88300 was calculated utilizing the <laughs> September 30, 2024. Note that only actually the hours used will be billed. So it sounds to me like we could save $88,000 if we do not have this group come in and do your finances. Their time is up. We need to hire a finance manager and not include this group that's going to charge us $88,000 in the meantime. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Holloway? I've been a contractor before, and I usually had deliverables. I, I needed to produce mm -hmm. actual deliverables. And this seems like it's just an hourly contract. Uh, we're not getting financial reports. I think, I mean, I, I, I infer that the contractor is writing the district, the, the general manager's paycheck. So his paycheck is getting paid. All the other staff members are getting paid. I think the contractor is probably writing a check to pay herself, her firm. Uh, those checks are continuing to get paid. Um, there was a big uh, loan payment that was due last Friday. And I guess I'm going to assume that that really did get paid. But there are no reports to uh, to explain all this, but to show this. So I guess there is only a certain amount that you can do it, 16 hours a week. Um, but it, I guess I, I just see that there's no deliverables here. There's no reports coming up. I think if 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 everybody's getting paid, if, if the finance contractor is getting paid, and if the general manager is getting paid, I think there should be reports. Uh, I just think it's little enough to ask. Uh, so that's that bothers me. Um, in your discussion, I, I heard uh, there was talk about CalOps. There was talk about 
promoting somebody on staff to do, do business services. And I guess I feel like you're kind of getting outside uh, the description of this agenda item. It's really only about a contract. Uh, it's not about reorganizing your business services department. Um, I do think it makes sense to ask a question like, when are we gonna get a new finance director? I think that's a reasonable question. But when you get a field and you're, you're talking about who's the, who's the recruiter and things like that, I think you really, I, I think you have a little bit of a problem with the Brown Act. I think you need to be more careful. Now, this isn't the first time I've seen discussions that kind of range off in the, in the weeds, um, but I think you should be careful. Thank you. And I, this is for the, the manager, uh, uh, just and I, a couple ideas. Uh, the CSDA is a good spot to advertise. Aqua is a good one. And then just for creative ideas, uh, uh, public CPAs will maybe act in as a treasurer. Or mm -hmm. so. that's, that's essentially what we have in this contract. Um, so we can record your comments. Can we have your name and community? Oh, yeah, my name is my name is Bill Witt, W I T T. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have a do we have a motion here? Yes. yes. Um, I'll make the motion that the board uh, directs the interim general manager to execute an amendment to the management and administrative services agreement with regional government services, increasing the not to exceed amount from 30,000 to 118,300 and revise the expiration date from June 30th, 2024 to September 30th, 2024 and authorize the interim general manager to execute extensions and or non-substantiative modifications to the agreement as necessary. We have a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any more comments or discussion on this? Seeing none, Holly, can you call the uh... President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ekman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, I'm not sure I have the most up to date here. Yeah, I don't think you do. No, I don't. Okay. The uh, next item is the Pavine Pipeline Replacement Contract Award. Uh, thank you, President. Contract. Yes, thank you, President. So um, Carly's going to present this item for you tonight. Thank you. Great, thank you. Tonight we're discussing the replacement of the Peabine Pipeline, which was lost in the 2020 CZU fires. The Peabine Pipeline was originally approximately 1.3 miles running from Peabine Creek to Foreman Creek and then to our treatment plant. On November 2nd, the Board of Directors voted to replace the pipeline in kind with above ground HDPE piping. The original pipeline plans will be used and updated to further this project and bringing on an environmental consultant early in the process will allow for streamlining of the permitting and environmental analysis. Staff released a request for proposals on January 8th and the request for proposals closed on February 20th with four proposals received. After staff review, Panorama Environmental was selected for award. So tonight staff's recommending the board of directors authorize the expenditure of approximately $99,000 for environmental consulting services on the Peabine Pipeline project. Staff is prepared to answer questions. Uh, um, so I, looking at the schedule here, this construction isn't happening this year. I mean, I thought that was the whole purpose behind doing what we did was to get it installed this year. It's still possible um, at this point, just with, us approaching the construction window being in the winter. Yeah, you're, you're um, it's unlikely, yeah. right? 
Okay, so this is a 2025 construction project. So they got to do it now, got to do it now, got to do it now that we got into in November really wasn't got to do it now, got to do it now. I, I'm really disappointed by by this, but I understand it is what it is. And we're looking at, I think it's 36 weeks for the entire project. So that pushes us easily into December and maybe longer if there's any delays or anything like that. Yeah. And it, I, will, I would like to add in that it does depend on which route we end up going with the environmental analysis, but looking at the cultural aspects that are required by FEMA for FEMA reimbursement, yeah. that's 18 weeks there. Yeah, so. I mean, I don't think we're going to get around that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, again, I, it is what it is. I understand that, but I really feel like we were um, we were rushed last November, and I, I'm disappointed in that. Um, but, um, you know, I, I mean, I looked at the proposal, and I'm, it, it seems reasonable, and um, I hope they can get started right away so it doesn't get out any further and we can get it installed in 2025. Mark? Um, when we uh, started into a review on a previous environmental assessment on the conjunctive use, the project description uh, that we started with got amended significantly. Um, I'm uh, not seeing a project description in the um, request for proposal, the project description laying out, um, here's what we're going to do, here's how we're going to do it, here's the means and methods that we're going to use for that, um, which I think is uh, gives not only the environmental assessment team, in this case, Panorama, uh, the framework on what the project is, but then also um, whatever other agencies outside. So when and how does that uh, detail being, well, we talked in there about tree removal in the RFP. And to me, removal is cut them down, take them away. But I thought in previous discussions, we've talked about the trees just need to be felled and left in place. Um, you know, those kind of details, I think, need to be written for what we're going to do. When does that uh, project description get developed? How does that get? Well, you are correct on the tree removal. <laughs> tree removal maybe wasn't the right term there because because of the conditions on the pipeline trail, right. there's not a possibility of removing right. the trees, so they will need to be locked and scattered. Right, and, and I know that we've talked about mm -hmm. that. I'm not focused on what we're doing with the trees. Right. I'm focused on the project description. Uh, our, our cost estimate that we had from our district manager included helicopter lifts. Are we using helicopter lifts? Things like that, I think, affect the environment and affect then what the environmental assessment team is looking at. So that overall project description of how are we doing this? Are we using, are we cutting the benches in by hand? Are we taking equipment in there to cut the benches? Everything like that. When does that get developed and written? So hopefully it's in concurrence with the environmental consultant beginning that cultural and biological surveys along the alignment. So because we're using the original alignment and replacing in kind, we have a really good idea of where this impact could potentially occur. Right. So we can start the cultural, which is looking right. like it's going to take the longest out of the whole process right. and the biological surveys. Um, unfortunately, first we need to do all the tree work and then those right. two things can begin as well as the survey to begin design and right. the actual and, and, details and, of the project itself. Right. And, and I understand that, yes, they can start those um, and we know where the pipe is going to go, mm -hmm. but how are we going to do it is what I'm, is what I'm seeking mm -hmm. for us to put together this project. What is the project? You mean a functional description, a requirements so, description? Wow. Well, let me take that question then. Okay, good. Um, it's just the idea is if you're looking at critical paths is kicking off the environmental does make sense now. It's, and we are just, you're asking to engage the environmental consultant now in the process, 
to start the cultural because that has a long timeline. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's just a notification of the tribes that, hey, we're going to be working in this right. area. Do you have anything? And so, and it'll help shape some of the details. But as Carly mentioned, we are replacing in kind. We already have our marching orders there. We also know where it's going. The methods, we have the old plans. We, um, but of course, we're not going to use the same methods they did 40 years ago. I'm sure they have better stuff there, but we're talking about connections and mounts and stuff like that. So some of the details will come out, that, but it's never hurts to bounce them off an environmental person if there's one's less impactful or it's going to get us through the hoop quicker. Um, my hope is we're replacing in time, we're replacing infrastructure that we lost in a fire. And my hope is that we can get through this without a lot of environmental scrutiny because but it is, it's existing infrastructure. But we were hoping the same thing when we started down the path for the conjunctive use because it was something that we were already doing under our emergency act. Am I right, Carly? Well, originally, the that's not the case because we started that project much earlier before the fires. So we weren't right. operating in the, that capacity at that yes. point. Um, and when we began that, it was based in a grant, which was focused on increasing in-stream flow. So it has just kind of shifted from an in-stream flow project to an right. operational project, which but, changes but we were, it But we were hoping that that was going to be simpler than what it was based on right. the use. Instead, we've gone from now to much more significant environmental review on that project. I don't know if I'd compare the two, though. I, mean, I, I agree, but what I'm trying to get to is develop the project description on how we're going to do this work. Yes, because we've talked about it here. We've talked about it in engineering committee meetings. We have kind of bits and pieces of this between a cost estimate, between Fern and Loretta's report, between, oh yeah, we're going to use CCC crews. Get all of that to eight two pages, three pages of a description on how we're going to do this. Put it together early on in the process. That, that is the idea. I mean, it's okay. It's just that we want to engage the environmental I, consultant. I agree. They should it. help be writing it. Yeah. Well, yes, but that's we're kicking it off because there is more to this whole story, but that's the first step. And we need we do need to kind of and I, I, I do see there is there is a certain sense of urgency and just that we want to make sure that we can engage the CCC because if not, if we right. don't engage them, then they're going to run off and they're going to be busy somewhere else. And then we get into fire season, mm -hmm. they might get called away to a fire and we can't right. use them at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do we need to complete the environmental assessment before we take the trees down? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. The CCCs need some form of environmental analysis. Right. Okay. We, did, we even had a discussion in house about that. It's we could do that without having it reimbursable by FEMA. But but if we yeah if we wait and then it's the case it's like okay we're going to wait we're going to do the environmental assessment and then we're going to make sure that everything we do is eligible by FEMA. Mm -hmm. Or we could take the trees out and then lose, I don't know, it was like $80,000 that we wouldn't be able to get, you know, it wouldn't be reimbursable at 90%. Um, and I wasn't clear on the budget aspect of what I saw in the consultant's budget summary. If we go the path of the statutory exemption, is our cost more like 39000 from what they're showing here? versus the 99,000 that the memo is asking us to approve. That's correct. Okay. And when do we decide? Or if, if we do the statutory exemption aspect mm -hmm. and it's not successful, is that the, the... I don't think that's the approach at this time. It's, it's more engaging the consultant and getting right. their feedback and then pulling our, also our legal and most likely to determine which route to go. Okay. Uh, but giving them our knowledge of the project, the background of the project, getting them up to speed okay. and then allowing them to help us make that informed So decision. most likely it is the full ISMND then? Potentially. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. These are the questions I have at this point. Jamie? 
Um, I, you know, understand the need for this. Um, you know, I, it's unfortunate about the timing, but it, these things always cost more time. So, you know, I, I'm prepared to move forward. Oh, I, I, Go. I don't really have any questions. I mean, they were considerably less expensive and we've had good experience with Panorama. I, I imagine one of the reasons they were, were cheaper is because they kind of know us and uh, were very helpful during the fire. So, you know, I think this is kind of an obvious choice and I'm in favor of it. What, am I wrong? The, the, um, I have one follow-up question. Go ahead. If okay. was, um, was Panorama the least expensive of the four? They were. Okay. All right. I didn't. Yeah. I missed that. By, by a lot. Okay. I mean, yeah, it was pretty significant. Okay. Because it's not explicitly listed in here. Okay. That's one of those things that I keep asking about. Yes. I obviously didn't know this. Comments from the public on this budget? Yes. Karen Brown, North of Boulder Creek, on page 118 and 119, it states uh, they are going to replace this line and they are not going to bury it because it's far too difficult for them to traverse this terrain. Are we aware that they are not going to bury this line that is not going to be subjected to maybe another fire? What kind of things are we going to implement to protect this water line so it does not burn up in a future fire? Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Well, I, I think it's worthwhile though saying that that was decided November 2nd. That yes, um, we did discuss that, that. that. That was discussed. It was the board's decision. I dissented that we would restore it above ground with plastic pipe. And, and I think there was a comment that Rick said something along the lines of, if we can find a way to protect it, we will, but there was no firm commitment around that. Point of privilege, though, this contract doesn't have anything to do with the actual replacement of the pipe. This is an environmental services contract, and so that is really a very separate discussion. I think she was just referring to something that the, the environmental services contractor wrote about the project that they would be overseeing. Making it subject to be able to be discussed okay. as background. Okay, I think we've had comments, all the comments. Um, I see nobody online. I see nobody online okay. seeking to participate. Um, I'd like to make the motion then that the board uh, directs the interim general manager to enter into a professional services agreement with Panorama Environmental um, in an amount not to exceed $99,693 for environmental consulting services on the Peavine Pipeline Replacement Project and authorize the interim general manager to execute extensions and or non-substantive modifications to the agreement as necessary. Second. I'm seconding. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. We are now to the consent agenda. Is anyone requesting that any of those items be pulled? Uh, yes. And you? Yes. Okay. Um, Bob, um, go which, ahead, Bob. Which? Um, a McGraw contract, um, Fall Creek fish ladders, uh, Raftella's contract amendment. And I'll add the one for Sandus. The so that's items B, C, D, and E. Yes. And between Bob and I. Thank you. Can I give you um, just a tip on procedure now? I'm sorry? Can I give you a tip on procedure now? You want to go to the public for the remaining items and then take a vote to pass those. 
the remaining yes. Does anyone have any objection if we go through the ones that are not being pulled? No, what he means is we should see if the public oh. want to comment on any items on consent that are not yes. being pulled by board does, members. Does the public have any comments on the items that are on the consent agenda? That are not currently proposed to be pulled by board yes, members. Yes, that are not currently being pulled. Seeing none. Anything online? Anything online? No. Nope. nope. So then you vote to approve that. Okay. We can approve everything else on. I'm sorry? We can approve everything else. Yeah, so we'll approve everything that has not been pulled. And I guess we have to start discussing the items that have been pulled. Okay, first we have to take a vote. No, you just take a vote. Oh, take a vote. Yeah, we take a vote okay. because sometimes there'll be resolutions that have to be, so we have to okay. vote on the consent so agenda. So we'll take a vote on the consent agenda on those items that have not been pulled. So we, are you moving the consent agenda? That is, yeah, yes. second. Okay. <laughs> President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Go to the first item that was pulled. Okay, let me take a look at this because I somehow my copy is not So this is the first one. Yeah. Okay, so the McGraw Hill 2024 <laughs> contract, Olympia Conservation Era. Not, not, not quite that big, but Martin Jody's not quite that big. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, my, my question about this has to go with um, whether or not this went out to bid. And because this seems to be sort of a rolling thing that she's done every year now for, for quite a while. And typically what I like to see is that at some point these have to go to bed to find out if we are in fact getting the best um, dollar. We may very well be, I don't know. But I don't, I don't like situations where the same person or the same company gets the contract over and over again without having to go through that. I think that's just not a good way to do business. So um, did we go to a bid for this or is just kind of just rolling it over? We did not go to bid for this, but this work is continuation of monitoring restoration and management of the Olympia Conservation Area, which Jody was part of the implementation and has been managing over the years. Um, we definitely could go out to bid for this work. All this is put into reports, all the work she's done over the years, as well as what she plans to do. But she does lay out what she plans to do for the area to maintain it, which then meets our permitting for our for the conservation area itself. And, and is this tied up in any way with the overall long term that's been going on for years and years and years, the habitat conservation plan? It is. Uh, okay. I, I, this might be something for the environmental committee to take a closer look at how to do this. I, I am concerned that this is turning into an annuity for a particular person, as opposed to it being something that is a competitive process for winning the district's business. I'm not saying that, that Jody is doing a bad job. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that there's business requirements as part of our oversight that we need to make sure that we're doing. That's my opinion. It may be a different opinion from the rest of the board. Um, uh, so I, I would I would like to see this referred to the environmental committee, uh, or engineering environmental committee for a further discussion about how to take care of this for next year. Since I'm assuming this is for this would be for two year, years. Two years. Hey. Can, uh, how how much money are we talking about here? It's uh, thirty about thirty thousand dollars for two years. For two years. Thirty thousand for two years. Staff got a comment here. I, I think I want to point out there's, there's yeah. not that many people that are even qualified to do what Jody did. And I'll take this one on the chin for Carly because I allowed her to go ahead with this contract. Um, I understand the need that you typically want at some point, you want to wash, rinse, and repeat and make everybody come back to the line and, and collect RFPs, et cetera. But, um, to move this this along, and like I think there's two contractors that even meet this these criteria. So, and having the familiarity she has, we are pretty much yes, we are asking that it's justified based on sole sole source. Can I ask one other question? Is there a point in time where this ends? 
I mean, let, let's say the HCP is at some point actually going to be delivered and ending, right? Sometime here, hopefully within the next year. Does this end at some point as well? So it doesn't end, but what happens is because it's a conservation bank, we're paying into it, it'll become self-funding as interest builds. So every project we do that affects Sandhills, we put X amount of money, depending on the size of the project, into a bank that then gains interest and we get paid out that interest annually. So this last year we got paid, I think $11,000 approximately uh, towards this work. So every year we get a payout, it kind of pays for the work that's being done at the conservation area. So the idea is that it's going to perpetuate itself moving forward. I, I, I Okay, I understand that. Um, hopefully the interest is higher that we're making now than the last year. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I, I, I put that out there because this with with Jody McGraw is, it, I don't think any of them have been bid, I, and I'm not even sure if the HCP was, but um, certainly nothing has been bid since then. And that's going back at least seven or eight years, if I recall correctly. Okay, great, thank you. And if I can add one other comment on that item. Um, on page 134, as part of the agreement, uh, section two says that the agreement will terminate on March 6, 2024. And I don't think you want it to mm -hmm. terminate yesterday. That was copy paste. So, I don't think so. Yeah. So get that correct. Yeah. Okay, 2026 is what you're looking at now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does anyone else have any comments on that particular item? I, I guess I just want to say, to defend the staff on this. I, I think <clears throat> nitpicking about something at this scale, um, that we're going to cause the staff to spend more time and salary to go out and try to beat her bid by a few thousand dollars. She's an expert at this. There aren't very many people that do it. If you look at what she actually charges per hour for somebody at her skill set, I think she's probably undercharging her by, by at least 50%. And certainly the staff things that the people she has working is charged cheaply. So I, I just I think, Bob, this is, this is just penny wise pound foolish to, to uh, worry about this kind of thing. Thank you for your opinion. Okay, so procedural question here. Uh, should we vote on each one of these as we go through? Yeah, that's, yes. that would be yes. the process. <clears throat> okay. Comments from the public? So we would need to move. Yes. Do um, we have any comments from the public? Yes. Please. Yes, I read the packet. On page 154 of your packet, it talks about an extra repair to a bridge and retaining wall at seventy-six thousand four hundred dollars. Point of order. That's, 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 that's the item. next. That's the next that's item. Next item. Next next item. item. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be back. Thank you. Okay. Anything do we online? have a motion? Wait. Do we have any comments online? Any comments online? No. 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 Okay, can we have a motion here for the McGraw contract? I'll move uh, the board to direct the interim general manager to enter an agreement with Jody McGraw Consulting in an amount not to exceed $29,889 for the purpose of restoration, management, and monitoring in the Olympia Conservation Area. Second. 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 Holly, will you call the vote? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I took my hearing aid out and uh, came on my phone. <laughs> um, so, President Hill. Yes. Yes. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Sorry, you said no? Yes. Yes. Uh, Director Mayhood. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Moving on to the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Change Orders. Um, yes, I had a question about the retaining wall repair. And this, this does sort of veer a little bit into policy and how we work together with other agencies. But I first wanted to make sure that I understood is, is what we replaced on our dime 
it, does that belong to us? Is that our asset that we are responsible for maintaining? You want to take the first step? Uh, yeah, we have an encroachment permit, which allows us to run our water line on the county's bridge, and we are required to maintain our water line, not the bridge. Oh, okay, but, the but I, I don't, I guess I don't understand this one because it's, it seems like we re we did more than just repair our water line. Correct. So what was the nature of the conversation around us taking that on to the tune of, I mean, this is the, the, the asset here is the something. county repair and maintain their yeah. bridge. Yeah. And, and they, they said, indicated that we had to repair the wall as part of our project. How did our how did our water pipe affect the wall? Our water pipe penetrates the wall uh, when it goes from underneath the bridge to underneath the pathway on the farmer street side. So there's okay. a detail in the plans. We have a couple of steel plates that get bolted together and then they were to cut a hole in the existing retaining wall. When we dug down and looked at the wood, you, would, you could just grab it and crumble yeah. in your hand because it was rotten. Okay. We reached out to the county and said, you guys need to fix your retaining wall. And they said, no, you need to fix it as part of your project. So the so then the extension of that is the fact that our water pipe goes through that retaining wall caused the rot and damaged the, uh, the retaining wall to the point where we have to repair that. <laughs> I don't believe so. Okay. But I that's what they claim. So, so basically, this is uh, th this is sort of your normal back and forth between <laughs> agencies here, and and hopefully this kind of building goodwill between the agencies will be extended in other areas. <laughs> I, that would be great. I would appreciate that from the county. Yeah, that would be really nice. <laughs> yeah. So, good luck. Okay. I just I would want to add. I have a lot of opinions about it, but. <laughs> because he's monitoring our deviance from the Brown Act, I'd just leave it for another topic, another day to bring to the board. No, I, I understand. I just wanted to make it real, I just wanted to understand that uh, how this all came about and whether or not we were in fact responsible for that damage to the retaining wall. It sounds like we weren't, but we're gonna pay for it. Got it. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Then I wanna comment on that also. Good job on doing this on a time and materials basis instead of accepting the general contractor's lump sum bid um, for 76,000 on their lump sum bid and they end up doing it on time and materials for just over 18,000. So good, okay. and thank you for that. Okay, do we have any comments from the public on this particular project? Any more comments from the board? Can we have a motion? Yes. Um, I want to make a motion that the board approve the contract change orders eight and nine for payment to um, Slybon? Slybon. Slybon Reed. Slybon Reed construction for the Fall Creek Fish Daughter Rehabilitation Project in the sum of $22,226. Thereby increasing the not to exceed contract amount from two million four hundred eighty nine thousand three hundred forty seven to two million five hundred eleven and five hundred and seventy three dollars. Second. Okay. Check President now. Yes. Oh, this point of order. Point of order. Did we already have public comment? Did I miss that? I, I did President ask for public yeah. comment on this one. Yeah. Vice President Ackerman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhead? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay. Um, refresh my memory, Bob. Did you pull the ref tell us? I did. Okay. I did, and I'll be brief in that. I believe that the Raftelis folks did the district a, a very significant disservice in a number of very key areas. They should actually be giving us a bit of a refund, uh, not getting an additional $15,000. Um, and mainly I wanted to pull it so I could make sure I voted no on it to express my dis 
appointment and disapproval of the work that they did. Gail? Can, can I just, one thing I wasn't clear on in, in the memo. I, it, it is true that they, uh, they did more meetings between the, the mm -hmm. um, committee and the board than was in the contract. Um, and so I can see that there might be some changes there, but um, I, what wasn't clear in, in the memo was you said you anticipate that there's X, Y, and Z going on. And so what I'm worried about is that we're going to get hit by another request later on. Um, and they have not produced some of the things we asked for. For example, one of the things that was in the contract is that there would be example uh, layouts for bills. And so they're supposed to do some of these things. And I just want to make sure that, that the staff has actually checked um, that they have done what they said they were going to do. Um, because I think Bob is, is right that their performance so far has been, uh, was often kind of minimal. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, you know, to be fair, it was at a confusing time when, um, Kendra and Rick were leaving, and I was sick for a lot of the summer um, as chair of the um, mm -hmm. Budget and Finance Committee, so that they ended up sometimes having to redo things when we kind of reconsidered. So it's not so much that I'm objecting to the extra 15000 if it's for these extra meetings and things that they had to do, but I just want to make sure that they're actually living up to the contract that we had um, and that we're not going to get hit by another bill for fifteen or 30000 down the road. Okay, um, so I don't, I don't know if there's a question for me, but I guess, you know, we can certainly go back and check. I know that a lot of these items, they actually, they had verbal agreements with Kendra in, mm -hmm. before my time, but I know leading up to the, the actual uh, vote in the 45 day period, et cetera, I had them doing a lot of additional analysis to look at some of the numbers different ways. And I definitely was giving them a lot of additional work to look at. There's another item of me coming to the committee about intertie rates, et cetera. And I asked them as long as they're on the path of doing this, that they cook those up for us too. So, um, you know, I'll just say that the additional work and that there is a little bit of hand holding if we need it for the, you know, as we, go into actually implementing the rate increase. There may be some questions and they've been responsive to me, at least. I feel like I get my questions answered quickly. And mm -hmm. so, so I have one comment on this, which is bad on us for accepting a contract where they said there was only gonna be one board meeting that they were gonna to have to attend. No, actually that, that was- uh, Go ahead. That, that, that's what I was a little bit confused about. Was it in the memo that I don't think, I think that we actually in the proposal that we ended up approving, there were more meetings than that. Yeah, I, I cannot <clears throat> conceive that. Yeah, that there, there were more meetings project than that. Of this scope so could be done I one think meeting. that what you, what was in the memo is not correct. And we need to go back to the original contract that was negotiated about how many, because I know there were discussions of at least one going to the budget and finance and at least one or two with the board. So there's no way that it was only one. Yeah. I, I don't, I, I, with Jeff, I agree. I can't remember if it was two, three or four, but it was more Exactly. I don't know if I implied that it was more than one, but just, they, I know that they didn't expect as many meetings as they They, they said that in their letter. Mm -hmm. Four I, board meetings instead of one. Yeah, yes. that's, and that's just not right. Yeah. Um, because we 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 knew, given the nature of the district and everything else, that this was going to be more interactive than maybe they were normally ex used to, and so that was part of the negotiation that we we had with them. And so that that's what I'm tr trying to say, Brian, is you need you need to go back and actually look at the, the contract that we signed with them, not what they say they agreed to, or not mm -hmm. what they say Kendra um, let them do. Uh, because I think that there were some deliverables, like I said, um, that never, that I've not seen, in, including one of them having to do with how the bill should be set up, which I thought was a pretty important thing. And the other was also um, making sure that we had the, the model in such a way that it 
can be easily used. And I guess we pretty much have that because we have Excel, but I don't know if that was the final version or what, but um, I, I would just feel a lot better if you <laughs> checked on that. I, I don't, like I'm saying, I don't object to the extra 15, the 15 at this point, because I know we did have more meetings than they thought. And you've now described some things that they've really helped with that are important, like going in and, and calculating what we should be charging for um, bulk rates uh, for other districts. Um, Okay, so and oh, Mark, I, I did. I wasn't going to ask the question, but since enough other questions have been asked on this one, um, did we request a breakdown for the fifteen thousand dollar change order, uh, similar to their original fee structure schedule that we see on page one eighty four in this? That was part of their original agreement, or is it fifteen thousand based on this letter that we have in? And that's what we got. Um, uh, I just based it on the letter. Okay. For the amount of money, I, I can kind of do the math in my head and just get an idea of like, did they spend more time on it? You know, I would say yes. You know, and roughly how many staff hours that equates to. So I'm going to suggest here that we've had enough questions that we take this item and give it back to staff and have them address some of these questions before we be reading my mind Jeff. before we uh, vote on paying this that's fine with me yeah and just FYI, if it comes back as a consent thing i'll have to pull it again so yes. so so we're just going to give this this item back to staff for additional work <laughs> Okay, the next item is amended and restated agreement with Sandus Civil Engineers. Um, and that's one that I requested to have on. Um, the change order that Sandus is asking for is uh, 47,500. And yes, uh, Sandus has done other good work for us in the past. Um, did we sole source to them on this one? Were they, were they? Um, go ahead. Here. So they're under contract for construction management for the Altavia pipeline project. Right. So this is for the Altavia okay. pipeline so project. So this is part of the Alta. Okay. Yeah. So it's yeah. basically a change order. We had an okay. issue with the contract because the term had expired. <clears throat> so that's why we have the amended and restated agreement. Which gives okay. us additional uh, time on the term. Right. And okay. then um, they're going to start working on the Highway 9 portion of a relocating of our main, which is yeah. a change from the original scope that we've approved for the contractor. Right. So now this I'm will give us the uh, construction management for the daily site observations, the labor compliance, right. uh, certified right. payroll I'm, monitoring. I'm, I'm aware of what was. Yeah. And the hard percentage uh, geotechnical right. uh, testing. Okay, so Santos is already doing work on Alta Via. Uh, Anderson Pacific is already doing work on Alta Via. You're you're moving the same team down onto onto Highway Nine. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. Um, the uh, construction management change order is almost sixteen percent of your contractor's amount. Uh, more than the eight to ten percent that I like to see on CM contracts, but um, it's a smaller. Um, but okay, I mean, all right. I mean, I mean, yeah. Smaller, you know. okay. And we don't have the capacity to cover this with our internal. Correct. Okay, because they're occupied on other projects. Correct. Hopefully, okay. All right. Oh, and um, the, the the memo on page one eighty nine referred to being discussed at the uh, oh, E and E yeah. committee meeting. It was that's a that's a typo. It should be the board of directors. It was approved by the board for that construction contract. Correct for the three hundred and two thousand. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, enough on my questions. Are you going to move it? Not seeing any other questions here. Any comments from the public on this one? Nope. 
Mark, you want to make a motion? Uh, as soon as I can find it. Yeah. Um, it's a long one. Yes. Um, the board directs the interim general manager to execute um, and amend and an amended and restated agreement for professional services with Santa civil engineers for additional construction management services for the Alta via pipeline project. Um, and as written, I don't see an amount here in the motion. You would want that. Uh, I would think that that should be in here. Um, so I will, um, amend what I just said uh, with Sandus uh, to be with Sandus civil engineers and surveyor planners for additional construction in the amount of uh, 47,500. Um, and authorize the interim general manager to execute extensions and or non-substantiative modifications to the agreement as necessary. Second. I'm seconding. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Thank you. Okay. I think that's all of the items on the consent agenda that have been pulled. It is. Uh, district reports, we have none. Um, there were four letters received or email received, which has been, which have been, according to uh, our board policy, referred to staff for uh, action or communication with the uh, individuals who have sent the letters to us. And information material, the SDRMA, which is the special district risk management risk agency. It, yeah. Anyway, they have they have a director vacancy, and if we want to recommend anyone for that, uh, we should discuss that at some future date. If somebody wants to apply, they can let us know, and then we yes, will endorse them. Yes, yes, that's true. If someone <laughs> wants to apply. Okay, I see nothing else on the agenda. Uh, we are adjourned and we will be going back into closed session after a brief. Uh, but